Enshrouded blends elements of adventure and survival games together in a way I don't think a lot of players have seen. This is most clear when talking about the game's skill tree system, which is more RPG than anything else. That being said, it is essential. I repeat, essential to not disregard this system as some of the skills can quite literally change the gameplay experience at a foundational level. But before we get into all of that, we first need to understand how we get skill points in Enshrouded. According to the developers and tested ourselves ahead of launch, the best way to level up and get skill points is by killing enemies, specifically tougher enemies in the shroud and around points of interest, mining, which actually surprised me but makes sense given how important gathering and crafting is, discovering new points of interest, of which there are many across Embervale, and clearing the root shroud at elixir wells. A combination of these activities will not only increase your character's level, but will net you additional skill points that you can allocate into the rather expansive early access skill tree. I should also note that skill points can easily be reset by interacting with your flame altar. There is a small cost associated with respecking tied to your flame altar's level, but it's nothing to really worry about. The real question though is what do you spend your points on? And that's the right question to ask yourself because during the early parts of the game, you're still trying to figure out exactly what to do and how best to master the world. The first skill I absolutely recommend you get is double jump. Whether it's exploration or combat, having an extra jump is a game changer. You can spec into this two different ways and it's really up to you how you wanna do it. If you start in the athlete tree, you can grab jump attack, which gives you a decent melee enhancement, but I prefer to go through the survivor tree and grab endurance and runner for a combined three skill points. Early on, you are at the whim of your stamina restriction, so I found that whatever I could do to lessen that burden helped make the gameplay experience that much more enjoyable. If you're planning on doing a lot of resource gathering, and don't lie, you are, then don't look past the lumberjack and mason skills right in the central circle. These don't require any prerequisites and give your felling axe and pickaxe a 30% increase to damage, which means they're dealing more damage to resource nodes, thus increasing the speed and gather rate of all resources. If you're someone that doesn't plan on doing a lot of gathering at the start, then don't waste the points, as each node costs two skill points, but if you're at the point where resource farming is a high priority, then it's well worth the investment. At this point, you have to ask yourself, what type of damage do you wanna deal? It can be tempting to beeline for the larger skill nodes, but if you do that, you're overlooking some valuable passive buffs that could play a big factor in your overall combat effectiveness. In the Warrior Tree is the Warrior's Path, which increases all melee damage by 10%. In the Ranger Tree is Marksman, which increases all range damage by 10%. And in the Wizard Tree, this is the way increases all magic damage by 10%. As we talked about in our Wish I Knew Sooner Tips and Tricks video, you're most likely going to be using a combination of two types of damage thanks to the game's quick swap range system. So it's worth investing in whatever two nodes increase the damage that matches your play style. For me, a melee caster, I want that bump in melee and magic damage, but you might want it in melee and ranged. Either way, a 10% flat buff to damage is nothing to pass over. From here on out, things get specific to the playstyle that you want to adopt, and luckily, Enshrouded gives you a decent number of options. For melee-focused players, I recommend you keep investing in the Warrior Tree. Slasher, Brew, and Thrust all further increase your melee damage based on the type of weapon you use, and there's a second set of nodes after that, Butcher, Hammer Time, and Pierce, which increase the damage further. Based on my experience, it's also worth putting a few points in the Tank Tree, especially if you're going to be primarily fighting in melee. Skills like shiny plates and heavy plates are perfect early game skills and scale great into the late game because as you upgrade your armor, the skills provide even more value. For ranged focus players, you have a lot of options in the ranger tree. We talked about the 10% increase with marksman before, but one node beyond that is sharpshooter, which gives you an additional 20% damage to ranged attacks. It's also worth checking out Sniper in the Assassin Tree for a 10% increase to critical hit chance with all ranged weapons. As you push further into the trees, it's worth picking up Skill Shot, which increases the damage to an enemy's head by 20% further, increasing your overall maximum range damage. If the goal is to pick targets apart from a distance, it's hard to go wrong within this ranger tree, and it's definitely worth experimenting with things like Eagle Eye, which may or may not work for your playstyle. It's not a direct damage increase, so I recommend it only if you think it's going to help you during combat. Finally, for my magic focus players out there, you have a lot of options, but if damage is our focus, then the wizard tree is where you'll want to spend a majority of your points. 
First, we should pick up Quick Charge, which reduces the ramp up time of a staff spell by 50%, making it easier to cast faster. It's also worth putting points in Arsonist, Thunder, or Iceman, which gives you a flat 10% increase to a specific magic type. Obviously, only choose the skill that matches the spells that you'll be using. Arsonist for Fire, Thunder for Shock, and Iceman for Ice. Use three more points and invest in the second node in that sequence, Pyromaniac, Lightning, and Sub-Zero for an additional 20% damage increase. Sliding all the way over to the Battle Mage tree, it's worth picking up the Unity skill as well, which gives your wide attacks a 24% chance to recover 2% of your total mana. You could rely on potions, but for the most part, you're not going to be able to chain together spells, so this is a great way to quickly build back up your mana reserves and continue casting. That dynamic does change a bit in the late game, but early on, this is essential. If you're planning on checking out the game with a few friends, then definitely take a look at the healer skill tree. Taking on some of the tougher enemies in the game, I can absolutely see the value in having a pocket healer, it's just not something we had the opportunity to test for ourselves. I didn't want to end the video without calling attention to some of the best skills in the game, the ones I think you should be aiming to get as soon as you have enough skill points. Again, these tap into your preferred playstyle, so there are multiple choices, but they're all worth the investment. For melee-focused players, the Veteran skill, which increases your critical hit chance by 10%, is a must-have. In the Barbarian tree, all the way at the end is Blood Rage, which increases your melee damage by 20% whenever an enemy near the player is killed with a melee weapon. That is a huge damage buff and absolutely worth the long-term investment. For a ranged focus player, I recommend checking out Ranger, which gives you a bonus to Endurance, Dexterity, Stamina Recharge, Crit Chance, and Crit Damage. Talk about value, that's five buffs all from one note. Multi-shot is another interesting skill, one I think you could take advantage of if you're primarily an archer. Being able to deal multi-target damage as a ranged focus player isn't always easy, and this skill helps bridge the gap, making you more effective while dealing with hordes of enemies. Finally, for all my magic focus players out there, I recommend following the wizard skill tree all the way through and picking up the wizard skill, which increases crit chance when attacking with magical weapons, chain hit, which will automatically trigger a second hit on another target whenever you crit with a magical weapon, and mass destruction, which further increases your ability to deal AoE damage to multiple enemies. It is a sizable investment to reach this point in the wizard skill tree, but it's well worth it. Now, if you really want to get a leg up in the early game with a few more skill choices and a mesh of other tips and tricks, check out our Wish I Knew Sooner guide already up on the channel. So there you have it, a look at some of the best and most potent skills in Enshrouded. Keep in mind, this is an early access game and things will change. So while the information here is relevant now, as the game continues development, expect to see more or different skills come into play. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.